Hello and welcome back. If we're going to learn how to solve optimization problems, we're going to need to learn about algorithms. Now an algorithm is just a set of instructions that you execute to get a result. If you've ever made a cake or brownies or something like that and you followed a recipe, congratulations, you've executed an algorithm and you got some yummy comestibles out of the deal. In solving optimization problems, we're going to use algorithms that were written especially for that purpose. And they go by names like steepest descent, conjugate gradient, and uh, marching grid. We'll learn about some of those algorithms. We'll learn how to implement them ourselves in MathCAD and MATLAB. And we'll learn how to call pre-written algorithms that are built into those programs. But before we do that, we need to understand what the big deal is. Why do we care about algorithms to begin with? What, what, what makes them so useful and so powerful? Okay, well, let's consider an example. Let's say you're designing an airplane, maybe an airliner, and you're trying to minimize the cost of operating the plane. Go talk to any airline person. There's no such thing as an airplane that's too cheap to operate. Okay, as long as they do everything else they're supposed to do. The, the cost they're looking for is zero. Well, you can't have that, but you can try to minimize it. And airlines and air, aircraft designers spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to reduce operating costs of their planes. So let's say there's some dimension in the plane, maybe the wingspan. And if you change the wingspan, you can. Uh, there's a point at which you minimize operating costs of the airplane. So let's do this. Let's draw a curve looks like this. And let's say you've got a curve that looks like that. Okay. That's X star. When the airplane has that dimension, say that wingspan, that, re that may gives you the, the lowest operating cost that you can get simply by changing the wingspan. Now there'll be lots of other design variables, but let's just consider one for now. Well, I just drew the curve. All you got to do is look at the curve and go, well, there it is. What's the problem? Why do you need an algorithm? Here's the deal. When, in order to draw that curve, you have to evaluate cost at a bunch of different points. When you draw a curve on your computer using Excel or MathCAD or MATLAB or whatever, it isn't a function. What that computer is actually doing is it's saying, okay, if X is this value, what's Y? If X is about this value, what's Y? And if you were to zoom in and you were to turn on the markers on your curve, you'll find out that it really looks like that. What, what the computer is doing is it's, it's evaluating the objective function at a whole bunch of different points, and it's connecting the dots. That's how a computer draws a curve. Now, this is fine if those dots are really cheap to evaluate. The sample problems we use in this class really are. You really can just hit enter on the computer and it'll just evaluate the objective function a whole bunch of times and you can just draw the curve. In practical problems, each of those points can be expensive, sometimes very expensive. All right? Well, what, what do you mean by expensive? What if it takes two hours on a uh, an expensive clustered computer to generate each one of those points. Every one of those points may cost the company hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Well, you can't just grind all these out. Number one, it takes a long time, and number two, it costs a lot of money. Well, you can't go to your boss and say, hey, I just blew, you know, $100,000 making this curve. What do you think? That's, that's, that, that, that's not going to make your boss too happy. So what we're trying to do with an algorithm is we're trying to find the minimum point on a curve or on a multi-dimensional surface using the smallest number of objective function evaluations. We're trying to find the minimum with the smallest number of calculations with the shortest computer time because computer time is expensive, either in just raw time or in money. So the whole rest of the class, we're going to be trying to find minima using as few calculations as possible. Now as we go through our homework problems, you're going to say, well, the calculations are so cheap, I don't really care. Well, I understand that. But I can't very well throw supercomputer out of problems at you and ask you to do those for homework. So for, for the purposes of the class, we kind of have to treat it as a game. We're going to try to figure out how to find optimum solutions to problems with as few calculations as possible. And that's what the algorithms are doing. 
the various algorithms are trying to search through our design space, and this would be 2D design space, and they're trying to do it in as efficient and intelligent a way as possible. And they have a very, very specific uh, disadvantage. We don't know what design space looks like. If we knew what it looked like, we wouldn't have a problem, would we? The point is, we are trying to find the minimum value of the objective function in design space with the minimum number of calculations, and we don't know what design space looks like. All right. So let me take this redraw this curve perhaps and let's imagine an algorithm let's see if I can redraw something that looks about like that curve there we go it's it's not exactly the same curve but it's close enough let's do this there's a there's a uh, uh, the, uh, algorithm called binary search and what it does is it starts stepping through design space until it notices the objective function starts to get bigger and these steps can be pretty far apart. So I'll put some points there. There'll be another video here in a little bit where you can, we'll go through binary search in much more detail, but it's probably good right now to just show you kind of how this works and there's a set of general instructions that you can use to solve any problem. That's the algorithm. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait a minute. The objective function just got bigger. Well, that means the objective function has to be in here somewhere. Or the objective, the minimum lives in here somewhere. The minimum is in there somewhere. I don't know where it is. I passed it. And it got small, got big again. So that means the minimum is either between those two points or between those two points. It has to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, I'll calculate a couple more points in there and I'll search again. And then I'll cal calculate a couple more points and I'll search again. And I'll ev eventually get to the point where the minimum value is changing so little that I don't care anymore. That's called an exit criteria. And that's our hint that we should stop. We've used up enough computer time. We've done all the calculations we need to do. There's no additional value in doing more calculations. All right. So we have laid out a simple algorithm and it has a couple of properties that make it useful. Okay. There's a clear set of instructions that doesn't change even if the objective function is different. We apply the same set of instructions, the same logic to different problems. It's laid out specifically enough we can implement it in a computer program and we can, the, the, the code will faithfully execute what we tell it to do. It'll find a minimum and it'll know when to stop. There's an exit cr criteria that says, okay, we've done as many calculations as are useful to do. There's a specific criteria that says it's time to stop calculating and just spit out the result. That's an algorithm. So like I said, later we'll go into the uh, binary search algorithm and others in more detail. They're all in the book, and you're probably going to do some homework with them as well. Hope this helps. I'll see you next time.